Hey, gentlemen. Dave, how are you? Hi. Glad to be here. So, Dave, this is Falcon Auto, Auto 3. Jake, Ashton, oh, oh Bray, gosh. Bray, Braden. Okay. Is there a test? I, I, Bryce, I Sawyer, no. Stuckey, Bryce, Son. We got Axel, Tyson. Get out of here, your name's Axel? Yeah, his name's Axel. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Garrison, otherwise known as Gare Bear. Landon, and then uh, the gimpy one here, <laughs> who just did this yesterday. Oh, jeez. Oh, two days ago is Charles. You got, everybody's got their safety glasses? Yes. Those will be put on, you're cool now, but uh, yeah, we put those on. And then uh, anything that's moving, don't like go, oh, stick your hand in there. That's not a good thing. I can ask a few questions, and then you guys can ask me a few questions. I'm always interested in why young men get into this. So if anybody's got a good story. How many of you are currently working in the auto industry? Half of, not even half of you, right? How many of you are in the class because you want to do this? Yeah, really, that's pretty cool. That's a good answer. You should be trying to figure it out. I'll tell you that. Don't, don't narrow in on your thing unless you're like me. I knew, yeah, I knew I was gonna do this. I'm an emotional guy. So this takes me back. I started this when I was 15 years old and done nothing else my whole life. And I'm happy. I got two of my sons at work here, five boys. It's been a heck of a ride. I started in a storage unit 34 years ago. And then I built it up to this, but I, you know, so you guys that have a passion for this, you know, that's awesome. The thing I like most about it is you get to make something work and you get the satisfaction of it. I, I could not sit at a desk job and never see the, 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 my labors not come to fruition, which basically is a throttle and a lot of noise, you know. Finally, when I fix something, it's like, Whoa! And it comes to life and you know it's for something i still get juice in me about that when did you know you wanted to do this um my grandma was a ice racer in the lakes of wisconsin she was an ice racer yeah your grandma yeah. on motorcycles or something uh cars <laughs> and she still has the car is this crazy lady still alive yeah that's awesome dude and then my grandpa was uh, he ran a gas station Okay, how about you? You raised your hand, right? You want to do this? Yeah. It all just started with taking Wiggins Auto 1 class. Uh huh. I just kind of fell in love with cars ever since then. What is it you fell in love about it? Focus in on that. What is it? Uh, cars are just like a metal Lego for me. Yeah. And I just like, I like puzzles, and cars are kind of like a big puzzle. You're right. It's fun for me. You're right. I use that analogy, in fact, when I hire a guy, I say, I'll bet you a thousand bucks I can, I can whoop your butt putting a puzzle together and I use that and the guy's eyes get wide and I go tell me how you'd do it tell me how you'd beat me so I'm gonna ask you we got a puzzle in here it's a 500 piece puzzle and it's a picture of the Boston Shore with the lighthouse and you know seagulls and the whole thing we got to take it apart and put it back together and we got to do it real accurately and quick and we can't miss any pieces or lose any pieces okay that's what car repair is a, a lot of it we're not going to diagnose anything. It's just rip it apart, put it back together, and don't screw it up. First thing you're going to do is you're going to have a box, the box with the picture on it. If you don't, you're going to take your iPhone, take a picture of it. Then you're going to disassemble the puzzle, and you're going to put the sky in one pile. You're going to put the seagulls in another pile. It's called organization. So that's the key. You've got to learn how to organize your stuff. There's basically uh, three avenues to go, as I see it, in, in this career. There's the Jiffy Lubes. Jiffy Lubes, tire stores, um, you know, this, I call it just the quick service, brake struts, shocks, and tires. You know, it could be the start of a good career because you've got to learn things in there, you know. Then the next thing is the dealership route. I did that. I worked in Porsche, uh, Mercedes, uh, Toyota, Dodge, and it gives you uh, some real good focus. It did at least back, you know, almost 40 years ago. But, you know, it gave me a lot of experience. So you got the dealerships, that single line kind of limits you. And then there's the independents. And the independents run from everything from like me down to a guy that's got a two-bay shop and him and his boy are working in there and they're doing good work and they're trying their best to provide a good service for their neighborhood. That's how I started, working in dealerships, getting that experience, and then I went out on my own when I was uh, 29. I'm hoping that their main goal, though, is to own their own, put their shingle out and, and, and provide for themselves in that way. Being your own boss is hard, really hard, 
because it's all weighted on you. But at the end of the day, man, nothing beats that is mine. You got to think long term. Don't 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 get caught up in that. I need it now because that's a big. I, I had five sons, man, their whole lives. I need it now. Don't do that to yourself. Pace yourself, man. What do you guys want to see? We could just see the bays. Guys working. I got cabs off. You guys ever seen a cab off of a diesel pulling a diesel? All these diesels, Power Stroke, Cummins, Duramaxes, Chevys, cabs got to come off the truck. I'm sure I got one or two of them off. We do a ton of motors here. So we'll, go see see, that? We'll, we'll see some of that. We'll see just regular work. Ask any questions you got. Hey, everybody. I want to introduce you to one of the finest technicians I've ever met in my life. Oh, it wasn't you, Tyson. I'm sorry. <laughs> it is. It's Tyson. Tyson's been with me for 28 years. He's very methodical. He can take a wiring diagram, follow it through, not get anxious about it, you know, and just think it through. And that's a real important thing, you know, and uh, I'm lucky to have him. He's helped me. There's no one on earth that's helped me build this business more than Tyson. Uh, this, is, uh, this is kind of an interesting thing. This will come out. You guys, will, you guys could say, hey, I saw that. So uh, Diesel Dave, everybody knows Diesel Dave. Uh, that's a Chevy 350. And uh, somebody put it in there, couldn't get it up and running. So I got it up and running for him. And there'll be a long YouTube video and that'll be on it with Diesel Dave. This Kyle, like a he's a young guy, been with itself. me about two years. Just about. Yeah. See, things are organized and he'll have metric and standard on one side. It's all, you know, organization, even your toolbox. All our boxes are kind of organized the same. So I can go to any box or any of the guys can go to a box if he's over there and he needs to just grab something. If you see a guy that's just got his tools just piled in a thing, you're like, give me a 10 millimeter. This is what he's doing. And, and again, every move you make, every step you take is costing you. That, that's one of the key things I can tell you about, you know, being a, a good mechanic. Sound familiar? That's one thing that's different about a shop like me. I will fix a motor. A dealership, they won't, they won't open a motor up, man. They'll just shove your motor in there. And uh, so you'll never get this kind of experience working in a dealership. You won't, you won't open a motor up. They don't want the liability. Now, a lot of times, you know, that's the thing that you'll have to learn, too. And it's like, how am I going to get to where I got to go Thanks, man. quickly and without the least amount of pain and suffering? And, and that's just, this is what you're doing. To do a head gasket on this, we got to pull this head up off from here up. We got to get everything up off of that. That's kind of hard on a truck like this with bent over the fender. It's hard on the body. So you do this, basically just work on it right here. What was the customer's concern, why it was brought in, and what test did you use to proof uh, the repair? The complaint was he had a coolant leak. Uh huh. And so I brought it in, looked at it. I could tell it's been pushing coolant out the coolant reservoir and the radiator cap. And then I also looked at the upper radiator hose. You can see here how soft it is. So it looked like it had been lots of pressure in the cooling system. Compulsion gas? Yeah. So we hooked up a pressure gauge and let the truck run for about five minutes and it had already built up 20 psi of pressure in the cooling system. And it should only be 16 at a max. Yep. So. Yeah. We talk about it, you watch my video, we call it the four C's. Condition, cause, correction, confirm. Condition, cause, correction, confirm. Condition, cause, correction, confirm. I'm gonna say it probably five more times before the day's over. You're gonna fix anything in your life with those four C's. Condition, my girlfriend's driving me nuts. The cause, I didn't call her. I, you know, I don't know what it is, you know. Let's keep it simple. The correction, text her. Confirmation, she quits bugging you about it. Or you realize she keeps bugging you about it, get a new girlfriend. Okay, let's keep going. Now that's a 6-7. Jason, say hi to these young men, would you? Jason's been with me about a decade almost. Jason can fix anything. What's the nastiest thing you've ever worked on, dude? I mean, this guy's worked on. Car, BMW V8, and I didn't take part. That's, that would be a good one. What's the most expensive engine repair that you'll ever do? No, it's no, not. The one that somebody else took apart. Part. People bring me their stuff in a box. And then they're like, how much is that going to cost? It's more than it costs you if you had to have me start it, because it's a mess. 
So okay. did the customer bring this to you? This like is this? it, man. Yeah. This, just this, like this. This is giving me nightmare flashbacks yeah. to when I got a quad four delivered in the trunk of a car. They started taking it apart and it was under warranty. Uh huh. I don't know why they took it apart, but then they brought it to me and went, here you go. Yeah. And this was back when we had the paper manuals. We didn't have anything online. So I had to go to the library and grab the book, sort all the parts, and then try to figure it out with the book, walking my way backwards. Uh huh. Then they still did it under warranty, which what? was my my biggest peeve on that yeah. one, yeah. This is the back of the motor. That's where the transmission goes. This is the front of the motor. See, everybody's familiar with the front of the motor. And you always thought, how many motors you ever seen with the, with the timing components in the back of the motor? So if this thing eats a timing chain, you got to tear the whole motor out, tear it down. Yep. It's, you know, they, 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 they never ask mechanics how to fix cars. Uh, as mechanics, this is what I was talking about. Every day is different for me. You know, we can pull cabs off cars. We can work on an old uh, Land Cruiser that's actually got a turbo diesel in it that's very unusual. This is a very rare, rare uh, Land Cruiser. Don't go to work in a yes. shop that doesn't have a snack thing for the guys, okay? You insist on that. But be good enough that when you insist on that, the boss is gonna get it for you. Gotta have snacks, man. This is called a hone shop, honing means basically I want to hone out a hole. I'm going to, I'm going to take the size it's at and I'm going to move it out a little bit. What Jesse's doing right now is, uh, you guys ever heard of torque plate honing? Where we were at is we just had our engines apart. Uh -huh. They had to take uh, bore taper and roundness, uh -huh. flatness for okay. the decks. Okay. Just the very, very basics. But when we were doing that, I mentioned to them, if you found an inconsistency or an out of spec situation, this is the next stop for a motor. This area here is where they're gonna correct any of the imperfections that we found in our measurements. You wanna simulate what's gonna happen actually under a load. So what we do is we put a torque plate on there, this, this thing right here. We torque the torque plate down to exactly what the cylinder head would be and it pulls that cylinder wall and it does distort it. I'm talking a thou or two thou of an inch. I'm gonna make that hole straight top to bottom all the way around so a six inch tall hole, four inches around, it's within two ten thousandths is my limit. If I don't have it there, we didn't do it right. 0 0.0002, I'm 10 times smaller than your hair on my tolerance. So this is a CNC diamond hone. We used to do this manually. The stuff that's happening today, it's exciting. I mean, I'm like, it's, it's really cool. So if your machine shop doesn't put a torque plate, you, you won't be able to see it but he's telling me that the hole now is, is distorted. So I'm on the four here at the top. Let's go down here in the bottom. We're a half a thou. Now we're a full thou. And now we go up to the top. Do you see that? Distortion in that, in that cylinder wall. What that's doing right now is dwelling a tight spot in the hole. The machine feels that, and it's actually just sitting there, kind of taking out that meat. It's seeing that irregularity on this graph. And once it straightens out all that irregularity, it'll start doing it. And then when it catches a, t a tall spot, there it goes. You see it? What's really nice about this machine is that once it's done with this hole, it'll go to the next one all by itself. I walk away from this machine. And it'll do all four of those holes. All I got, all I got to do is come back, flip the block over to the other side, keep going. The accuracy and thoroughness of your work. Remember, whatever you do, your schoolwork, your yard work, your you know, your chores, your job, where you happen to be at, but the accuracy and the thoroughness equals craftsmanship. You learn that and you develop that over a life of work. But if you can start out with that knowledge, you're, you're way ahead. This is a teardown area. This, this had a bunch of equipment in here and it's some of the stuff we moved next door. But this is getting moved next door into that rear room. But this is where we put a crankshaft. I've got video of it. And, and this is how you grind it. Uh, my son Joey, who I'll introduce you to in a minute, is a, a master at this. When you get that crank in there and that, those, that thing's going like this and you got the wheel coming in, it's, it's almost like overwhelming. And you're sitting here trying to you know, direct everything, it's pretty cool to watch. So this is a big parts washer. This is an oven and a shot blaster. This is how we clean our cast iron and make all our, you know, if you look around here and you see all these motors, these motors look like I mean, these were, you know, these are 10, 15 year old motors. And if you look at the castings, they look brand new and that's how we do it. Braxton's my teardown guy. 
He's a lot of guy. Bra Braxton, every shot needs a Braxton, I'm telling you. And I'm lucky to have him. So, you know, this is the nice thing about a, a CNC machine shop. Do you see this, Jesse? Look at that. He's like magic. He's over there. He's supposed to be over there honing a block. But look at that thing. The hone's working. So, I'm like, I got one employee running two machines. That's, that's part of the fun stuff of CNC. Yeah, sometimes Je Jesse can run around and do all kinds of stuff. They call this a, roll, a, a fourth axis rollover fixture is what this fixture is. But the machine will bring this over. This is cool. Now it will go a little further, come back, and zero that perfectly. But you'll see, it's take, you can see that little line. See how much it's taken off? That'll do a lot of things. We've already bored the block yeah, by cutting the cylinder walls, the really metal here. And then once we do that, then we'll um, move it over and we'll hone the cylinders and finish them up. <laughs> Yesterday you asked me, do I know any good machine yes. shops? And my answer was, Dave's Auto. But your friend asked me, do I know someone who's cheap? No. I do not know no. anyone that's cheap that I would recommend, right? Now you see know. why. Anybody know what that is? It's a simulator, right? No, I mean the engine. Anybody know what the engine is? Take a shot, man. Come on. It's a 5.9. You guys always say, oh, I got to get me one of these. Come on, what is it? It's a Cummins. There you go, OK. So everybody come in a little closer so you can hear. It's noisy in here. This is, this is, we, this is called a sim test, or it's a wet bench is what this is. Uh, this is not a dyno. A dyno, we'd have the motor, the intake on it. You know, we'd fire this thing up, and it'd, it'd make a lot of noise. But what this does is there's a, a drive plate back here, and we can hook it up to any motor. We got a crane up here, so we lower a motor in here. Any motor that we've built, built plates to cover up different parts of the cooling system. Here was the thermostat housing. Here's where the oil cooler goes. Here's the lower water pump connection. So we seal all that off, and we can pull a vacuum on the cooling system. See, my son built the motor. This is my son, Joey, one of the, one of the greatest motor builders in America. And it, it's, it's true. So the accuracy was building the motor, right? Everybody, you got to get the tolerances right. You guys kind of understand that. But then, and to get the craftsmanship, what do I got to do? I got to be thorough. I want to test my product. The confirmation before I ship, we're shipping this out? Before I ship this out to the customer is, I'm about to show you. Let's whip it up, dude. So we've pulled the vacuum. Right now we're pumping 12 PSI at, uh, our RPM is less than 100, or 102 RPM. If we crank that up, you'll see the oil pressure kick up a little bit. Okay. And here, in each one of those holes, behind you there is, a, is compression leads. We can hook up a compression lead, and then we can do a running compression test. So in a motor, there's, there's a few things that I need before I ship it out. I want to know that the cooling system has no leaks. I don't have a freeze plug leaking. I don't have a head gasket seeping. The oil pressure, I want to make sure that I got oil pressure while it's running. If I ship this out, I want to know that I got good equal ump for compression in each hole. I want to know I got oil pressure, and I want to know I got a cooling system that's sealed up. So if he puts it together and he's saying, hey man, the thing won't hold cooling, I'm like, look somewhere else, dude. It ain't my motor. Or if he says, I got no oil pressure, I'm like, look somewhere else. It ain't my motor. Or if he says, hey, man, I got a dead hole in number three, I'll be like, mm, not when it left the factory. I got a printout that says I had 320 PSI in there. Condition, cause, correction, confirm. Accuracy and thoroughness equals craftsmanship. That is the end of my talk with you guys, because if, if you'll learn just some of those things, and I'm telling you, especially you guys want to be mechanics, or whatever you do, or if you're hiring somebody to do something in your house, follow that rule, and, and you'll get a better job. That's what makes us different. You, you will never find a machine shop in a, in a, in a 30 bay working shop. It, it ain't happening. But that's why we're who we are is because we take, we take it from A to Z. Most of the time you buy an engine off the, off the internet or you buy it or a machine shop will do it for you and they give it to you and they say good luck. And, and then if there's a problem, but that's why we do so many installs. And the key to it is stay busy. Do, do what you love. And, and the rest of it will fall into place. That's the truth.
Don't chase money. Chase, chase what you love. It worked for me. Peace out, guys. Thanks, man. You've been great for me. Thanks, Dave. Thank you.